This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Today I am um, in my Edbotedut. I was uh, thinking to myself. Every person in the world has got a point that that is his point in Avodat Hashem. Like, we're all obligated under the guidings of the Torah. Everyone needs to pray, everyone needs to say blessings on the food, everyone... Halakha, we are all obligated to keep the Halakha. But many righteous people in many ways explain to us that we need to pick one of the mitzvot, something that is closer to our hearts, and to go with that, and to, to, to make it special, like to be, to be mehadrin, to try to do more than you can, to be chassid, to, to put more effort on that, to invest more money on that. So, people like mitzvah of etrog from the four minim in Sukkot, so okay, great, people putting a lot of money on etrog. It's a, you can buy also a lulav, the, the, the most expensive lulav. Oh, people like, like, like to buy a trog. Okay, great. Tefillin, people like to, to buy very expensive tefillin, the, the best quality tefillin from a very known and righteous uh, sofer that wrote those tefillin. Great, whatever. Every person finds a point that is connected to him, to his heart. So, there are people that can find those points like easily, it's just the, the, the recognizing it. And there are other people that need to, to search more if they want to find their point in Abu Dhat Hashem. What is, what is connected to me while I'm serving Hashem? So they're going to be a person that for him to wake up in the morning and to pray Shacharit, uh, early morning prayer, so for him it's okay. He doesn't really find happiness and satisfaction from that mitzvah. But he says, okay, I'm going to continue, I'm going to do, I'm obligated, I'm not exempting myself from the obligation because I don't feel the sweetness of that mitzvah, of that obligation, but I'm going to keep on searching for my point in Avodat Hashem. I'll try to find where I fit, what is my inner connection to, to Torah mitzvot. And then he will try maybe to learn, but again, a person can find himself that while he's learning, so he is learning, he is adding more wisdom, more information, he's getting clever, his memory, the knowledge is expanding. Okay, great, he, he finds the benefit of, of learning, in learning, but something is missing. Okay, yes, it's a, it's a nice book, it was an amazing class, it's a wonderful lecture, that rabbi, yes, he is a genius, no doubt about it, yes, it's fun, but where, where am I standing in, in, in that big picture? What is my part? In, in, okay, so I'm learning, but still, I'm looking for myself. So, I was thinking today about that, about my point. In Avodat Hashem, what is my point? I was asking myself, and also yesterday night I mentioned it in the class, and I said over there that when I'm looking at myself, no matter what I'm going to receive from Hashem, from the Creator, it won't satisfy me completely until we will all going to be redeemed completely until the last temple will come down from heaven, I won't be happy and satisfied completely that I will be able to say, okay, I finished, I'm done, I'm relaxed. Like, give me the biggest rewards, prizes, money, wealth, health, success. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm going to work with it to achieve something else. I'm, myself, I'm not going to stop. Okay, give me a house. Okay, so I'm going to have that house. Okay, give, what I'm going to do with that house? I'm, I'm immediately going to jump from that stage to the next. Okay, give me more knowledge, give me more wisdom, give me more abilities, give me more power. Okay, what I'm going to do with that? I'm not going to rest, I'm not going to stop if I'm going to find those things until I'm going to know that everyone are happy. 
I have a certain general point inside of me that cannot find satisfaction until I know that everyone else are, 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 are also happy. And I think that there are many, many souls like me, like I am. I don't think that I'm the only one like that. I think that you have many people that even though that they have a lot in their hands, in their pockets, in their houses, but it doesn't really complete their search. Okay, so I have my, my income, my money, my house, my family, my children coming for Shabbat, everything is great, we're healthy. Something is missing. And to people like those, to people that have a certain, an inner search, to those people I'm, I'm, I'm willing to pass, to give today, a, a, a very important advice. To people that are searching for something that is beyond this world, to those people I want to give this information, to give you an advice that will help you to understand why nothing in this world can satisfy you. People are chasing in this world after false dreams of an imaginary success, of being wealthy, of being successful, being known, famous, loved, supported, whatever, recognized, appreciated, honored. But even when those people receives, receiving what, what did they hoped for, happiness is not coming with, with those titles. Immediately you feel very, very lonely and, and broken and empty. So, first of all I'll tell you why, and then I'm going to tell you why you're so lucky to be like that. The reason that it's happening to you is because of the fact that what that you're seeking for is not a physical thing that belongs to this world. You're seeking for faith. And the faith is in the nights. And what does it mean that the faith is in the nights? That no matter what you're going to achieve, how high you're going to reach, which high level of understanding about the Creator or about yourself you're going to achieve, immediately after you're going to hold it in your hand, it's going to disappear. That's the nature of faith. Faith is our trust in something that is not available. That's the meaning of the word faith. Faith is in someone that is invisible, that you cannot see. You don't need to believe in something that you can see. If I'm standing here, you don't need to believe that I'm standing here. You know it. You can see it. You don't need to believe. You need to believe that my message is true, that my message is right. This is something you need to believe. You need to, to give me your confidence, to give me your trust, and to go with it, and to give it another chance, another minute to listen. It's something that you do when you don't have a grab, that you don't have a, a hold, you cannot hold that thing that you're looking for. That's faith. Faith is a mystery. Faith is something that you can never reach, because whenever you reach it, it disappears, and immediately you need to go and search for the next level, to go to find it again. That's why it's written, Emunatcha sevivotecha, that the faith is surrounding the person. And all of the time it makes another circle and another circle and another circle and it's been compared to the moon. That the moon is round and also goes in circles and circles and circles and he's disappearing and revealing itself again. And the nights are melting into the day and then coming in the next day again. And the faith is in the nights. So that's why we're finding it so hard to find real satisfaction from life because the fact is that we are seeking for something that is much much deeper and it's called faith and now why we're so lucky why you're so lucky because the reason of the destruction 
the horrible, horrible destruction of our holy temple was because that our people stopped from seeking for faith. People, people were satisfied enough from their physical success in this world. They were choose, choosing to, to be religious and they were satisfied with that. They were satisfied enough with their wealth with their health, with their religion, with their customs, with their holy days, and they were satisfied with that. It was enough for them. They were pleased and satisfied and glad, and they stopped looking for Hashem. They became religious. They became the team, FFBs. That, that's the, they, they lost their purity. They became something, and that's where they stopped. And when you stop, you lose Hashem. You lose the Creator. Because if you want Hashem, so you need to tell Hashem, Moshchen Yacharecha Narutza. You need to pull me, Hashem. I want to run after you. I want to achieve you. I want to find you. Where are you, Hashem? And Hashem, because that He is so great, because that He is so high and above everything that is known to us, and He is beyond this world completely, he is above spiritual. He is endless. He, he, we cannot define him in no way. There is nothing that we are going to say about him that really going to describe him. That really going to, going to explain to us something about his real existence, about his real being. We, we cannot reach him at all. The only thing that we can do is to run after him as fast as we can, as much as we can. To do the best that we That's what we can do. And then, while you're doing that, you're going to find another spark, and another good stone, another diamond, and another pearl, another gem, and another piece of gold. Every point of understanding, every piece of clarification, of new knowledge that you're going to find along the way, will just going to give you the push, the energy, the motivation, to make another step, to make another circle, to try to reach Hashem again. Because like we said before, immediately when you're going to find it, it's going to disappear. Rabbi Nathan, the student of Rabbi Nachman, is asking a very deep question in the holy book that calls Likut HaLachot. And he's asking over there, how can it be? He's opening his heart and he's saying, how can it be that last month, I was praying to Hashem, I was calling the Creator to help me financially with my parnasa, that I'll have my money to pay my rent, that I'll have my money to buy food, groceries for my family. And I was crying to Hashem, and Hashem answered my prayer. Last month Rabbi Nathan is saying, Hashem answered my prayer. I was calling Him, and I didn't have no way to be answered except of His open and wide and loving hand of grace and mercy and he opened his hand and shown me his miracles and gave me the money that I needed last month and when he gave me that money I was so sure that now I saw in my eyes the wonders of the Creator my faith was solid and strong. It was obvious for me that there is a supervisor that takes care of all of his children because I saw that miracle last month with my own eyes and it was 100% above nature. But how come Rabbi Nathan is asking, today, again I'm scared what's going to be next week that I'm going to have to pay my rent. How can it be? Because I remember that last month it was so clear to me that there is a Creator. The light was so bright. It was so clear. I didn't have the slightest doubt about the existence of the Creator in my life. And on the fact that He is supervising on me and taking care of me. And His loving kindness is beyond all kinds of, 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 of reasons. And, and He is loving me with no end. And I saw it. So, how come this month I lost my faith again? So Rabbi Nathan is explaining. He's asking and explaining and answering. And he's saying like that. 
When it's dark, when you cannot see anything, it's not because that you fell from the illuminating level that you were holding last month. The reason that now you cannot see the light is because that the Creator is closing your eyes. He's blocking your eyesight. He doesn't let you see. A regular person thinks to himself when he is in a high level, immediately he thinks to himself, okay, that's my level. That's me. I'm waking up early every day. I'm praying every day. I'm going to the mikveh. I'm catching my hours of limud. I'm learning in the yeshiva. I'm doing this and that. And I'm making money. And I'm rich. And my wife, she's happy. And everything is perfect. And we have a house. And, and that's me. And now when he starts losing things, immediately he's saying to himself, Oh, I fell for my level. I'm not holding on. I lost my one hour in Bodedut. I'm not learning so much. I'm not waking up as early as I was. He thinks that his balance, that his regular level is in the daytime, in the light, in the time of success. But maybe his real level is in the darkness. Rabbi Nathan is asking again. Maybe now when you're in darkness, that's your real level. And when Hashem turns on the light, now that's His grace. That's His kindness. Maybe that's not your level at all. It's only the loving kindness of Hashem Barach that is influencing on you and wrapping you and supporting you and showing you His kindness, His endless love. And it's not your level at all. And you should just have gratitude and appreciation to Him for giving you those free gifts all of the time. So now, when you feel that you're in darkness, you need to understand, it's not because of you. You don't have the ability to turn on or to turn off the light. You don't know where the switch is. You don't know the number of your shoes. You don't know your name. You don't know your nature. You don't know anything about the secrets of creation. Do you know how the Creator created the world? Do you know how the Creator made the light comes and the sun is shining and the light is, 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 is penetrating between the cracks? And do you know how water flows and how the, the clouds are, are being created? Do you know how, how the drops of rain are not touching each other when they're falling from the clouds? Do you know something about nature? Do you think that you know something about nature? You don't know anything. So how do you think that you know something about creating light? and darkness. Only Hashem, who amar vayehi, utziva vayamod. When He commanded that there's going to be light, okay, so now there's light. And when He is covering the light, and He is declaring that now it's going to be dark, it's going to be dark. There was a righteous man, one of the students of the Baal Shem Tov, I don't remember his name, that one time, in the time of Mayriv, while they were davening Mayriv, the, the, the evening prayer, he starts screaming, I can make that an oath now. I can swear to you right now that Hashem Itbarach, He Himself is Ma'ariv Aravim. He's the one that brings down, bring out the nights. He. It's not a natural thing that the sun is setting in, in, the, in the west. And, no, it's not. Hashem is making the darkness and Hashem is making the day. Hashem illuminates and Hashem is covering. Hashem is doing everything. Now when you find yourself in the darkness, instead of losing your connection to the Creator and falling in the trap of the evil inclination of start blaming yourself and hating yourself and, 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 and rebuking yourself and choking and destroying your self-esteem because you think to yourself that you fell from your level, maybe you just need to remind yourself that there is a supervisor. And now you need to be in the dark place. In that darkness, maybe there is something that you can do. Maybe now, from that darkness, you can call Hashem. Maybe you should hide from something. Maybe you should relax and take a nap. Maybe something good can come out from that darkness. But you need to put your mind into the purpose of your falling, of your failure. And not to start playing into the hands of the evil inclination of that lying snake that is hunting us all of the time with his lies, with his horrible words that he's telling us on ourselves. 
all of the time breaking your spirit and telling you bad things about yourself. Oh, you don't have enough money. Probably you defected your purity. Oh, you don't have Shalom Bayit. Your family are not happy. Oh, it's because you're not learning enough. How do you know? Where are you bringing all of those assumptions? All of those wise conclusions, where are they coming from? They are coming from the dark side of the evil inclination. When you're negative about yourself, when you're being judgmental about life, it means that you don't recognize the Creator. It means that you don't see the light of good, of love, of grace, of beauty, of the Creator. Even in the hardest hours, the Creator is with you. Now you should ask why. You should ask, why are you hiding your face from me? What's going on? Why do I need to go through those darkness? There's no problem to ask. If you're not going to ask, you're never going to be answered. If you're not going to dare to go and talk to the Creator and to ask Him your prayers, your requests from the bottom of your heart with the most sincere and honest way, with your own voice, to ask the hardest questions that you have, if you're not going to do that, your prayers will never going to be prayers of truth that can be answered. They won't be your prayers to be answered. If you're not going to bring out the blood from your heart while you're talking to Hashem, if you're not going to dare to ask Him, why? Why all of this destruction? For what we're suffering so badly, so hard? Why people need to lose their houses, to lose their families? Why people are, are being separated from their families and torn? Why we need to go through so many judgments, so many hard hours? Why so many people need to cry and for so many hours and for so many days? If you're not going to ask those questions, you're never going to be answered. Hashem is close to everyone that will call Him with truth now. What's the problem? That we have people that are coming and pretending to be leaders of our nation, pretending to be righteous people, holy teachers and rabbis that will come and will guide us. But the truth is that they are freezing us. They are breaking our spirits with their sadness, with their bad attributes, with their negativity, with their depression and despair. Because that they gave up long, long time ago. And maybe they were never even searching like they were supposed to. But because that they are standing in certain places and they have the ability to influence and to teach and to preach and to rebuke, and they're standing in those positions and they are chilling us, they're breaking our spirits with their sadness, with their depression, with their anger, with their fears. And they're stopping us from believing in our true selves. But if you're just going to take yourself to a quiet place and open a discussion with the Creator, going to try to talk to Him and to tell Him, Hey, what's going on? What are you doing? Where am I? Where are you? Why did you do that? Why that, that thing happened? Can you explain me those things? You will be answered. And you will find answers to your hardest questions. And you will find satisfaction. You will be pleased with those answers. Because you're going to know that they are the right answers because they will come and appear from inside. You will feel happiness of removing all of your doubts. You won't be afraid anymore. You know when a person is afraid? The verse is saying, Pachadu chata'im betzion. People afraid because of their sins. When you stop sinning, and now you're going to say, Oh, okay. I'm going to do that. I'm going to teach you. It's not hard. It's not hard. When you're going to stop sinning, you're going to stop being afraid. So now, 
after a person sinned, there is only one thing to do, and it's called tshuva. What is tshuva? It's to reveal the truth. It's to stop hiding. What was the reason for that sin that you were going with your inner thoughts against what the, the Creator wanted from you and you were trying to find your success on your own? So you had to lie and you had to cheat and you had to betray and you had to steal and you had to make up stories and you had to lie. And when a person is lying, so he's not able to stand anymore close to the Creator. Because a person that is lying, Dover Shekarim, Lo Ikon Leneged Enav, cannot stand in front of Hashem's eyes. And that's the trick, and that's the issue, and that's the secret, and that's the solution. That you're going to just stop lying. Now a person is so stuck in his own lies, that he's not even aware to how deep he is stuck in his own lies. 24 hours a day, you're lying to yourself all of the time. How are you doing? Great. What? Just to answer that simple question, how are you doing, gonna take you days and days and days to really to share, to open up, so you can't answer. So at least be honest. Don't say great. Say the truth. Say, I'm trying to thank Hashem, going through certain things, it's not so easy. I'm trying to do the best I can. Don't lie. Be honest. The way to be honest, it's to work on your self-awareness. To listen to yourself. But you need to remember that the Creator gave us the tools to success. You can succeed if you will just try. If you will try to listen to yourself, you're going to recognize the lies and you're going to recognize the truth. Because divrei emet nikarim, because words of truth can be recognized easily. Easily. If I'm asking you, how are you doing? And you just answered, you know if you lied or you haven't. You know it immediately. If I'm asking you, do you have money? And you're going to answer yes or no, you know if you lied or if you said the truth. You know the truth about yourself. You know the truth. If I'm asking you if you're thirsty or not, you know the truth. No matter what you're going to answer, yes, no, I'm thinking about it. No matter what you're going to answer, the real truth about yourself, you know it. So what is stopping you from using it? That you're surrendering yourself to your fears. That you're giving yourself in the hands of your fears. And you let that evil inclination to drive you and to control you and to take you to, it, to, to, to foreign places. To the dark places. To those twilight zones. To those foreign places that we don't want to think about. Because one sin drags you to the next. And the next takes you further and further. And then you lose yourself. Because of all the lies. But if you're just going to work on being honest, simply honest, just truthful, just say the truth. And if it's a process and you don't know exactly how to cover on years and of years of, of lies, years and years of lies, and you don't know how to fix it, okay. So take one step after the other. And with your baby steps, try to fix. But at least stop lying to yourself. Work on your self-awareness. When you're afraid, be able to say, I'm afraid. When you're scared, be able to say, I'm scared. When you don't know, teach yourself to say, I don't know. Because lies are floating above the water. The Creator doesn't let you lie. This is why all of the time people catch your lies. All of the time people feel about you things that you're trying so hard to, to, to hide and to deny. And the Creator doesn't let you go with your small lies. Because He doesn't want you to be far from Him. So He's rebuking you. And He's rebuking you with love. Because the Creator rebukes the ones that He loves. He wants you to come closer to Him. And the way to do that is only through the truth because the seal of the Creator is the seal of truth because the name of the Creator is truth Hashem Elokechem Emet 
He's the God of truth. And as long as you lie to yourself, you're separating yourself from Him. And you're causing all of the exiles to yourself. The evil inclination, that horrific snake, doesn't have no power, no effect on you. He can only open options for you. He can only offer. He can only try to attempt you. Really, to force you to sin, it's above his powers. It's beyond his reach. He cannot do that. He does not have the power to take you from one place and to put you in another. He can just offer you that shortcut. He can just tell you that in that way, you're going to be so happy. That that's going to be the secret of your success. That that's going to be the solution to all of your problems. He can open those options for you. And if you're going to follow his advice of lying to someone, of doing something that feels wrong, of going against the light of kindness, the light of your soul, going against the rules of the Torah, the deep rules of the Torah, not the regular halachot that you read in the books, the will of Hashem, going against the will of Hashem, that's the mistake. Hashem is telling us there are things that are so important to me that you don't count those things at all. You don't think about those things. And they're the most important things that I ever said. They're the highest will of mine. That's the purpose of the creation. That you will love each other. That you will respect each other. That you're going to appreciate each other. That you're going to have gratitude to each other. That you're going to walk in the way of the land. That you'll have derech eretz. That you will be mechabdim zeh Respecting each other. Appreciating each other. Supporting each other. Giving from your talents, from your power, from your ability, from your financial wealth, from your health, from your power. Giving something to the Creator. Giving back something. If you're going to do that, in that moment the Creator will have the ability to reveal His godliness, to reveal His beauty, His greatness to you. It depends in your honesty. It depends in your truth. As long as the person is lying to himself, he's going in circles and he's going in the opposite direction from those people that are searching for the truth, that are searching for faith. Because you're not searching for the will of Hashem. You're searching for your own success. You're asking from the world to help you to fight against the Creator while crowning your fears and your anxieties on your life. While giving the power to the evil inclination to lead you to foreign places that are against your spirit, against your soul. Thing that makes you in the end hate yourself. Being disappointed from yourself. Losing your true self and a purpose for life, and a reason to live. Losing that to your fears, to your stress, to your lack of faith. So now we're standing between two high mountains. Okay, from one side I can be a real believer, I can become a righteous man, I can be so close to Hashem, but for that, I need to overpower all of my fears, all of my stress, all of my worries, all of my traumas, all of my patterns that I, I, I don't know where they started even. I don't know how to go out from all of my bad habits, from all of my, 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 my bent way of education, the, the ways that I, I learned, uh, started when I was a child. How am I going to change all of those things? How am I going to become righteous? And from the other side, you look at all of those fears, mountains of darkness and fears and stress and depression and, 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 and consistent stress that is attacking you, waves on waves. After every argument, there is another disappointment and another, and another rebuke and another insulting and another failure and another, and another sadness and another depression. And how you get over that darkness. So like we said before, that Rabbi Nathan said, the Creator is not only 
bringing the light. He is also creating the darkness. He is not only revealing the brightness of the good attributes. And when you're succeeding, you're close to Hashem. The real truth of the Creator is that Melokol Havetz Kevodo, that He's filling the wide world, that He's everywhere. And there is no empty space from His existence. And even in the lowest places, when you're reaching rock bottom, in the lowest places of hell, over there the Creator is waiting for you. And if you're just going to speak words of truth, there will be enough to open huge openings, doors for success, even from the darkest places of them all. And you will rise to the highest places, but it depends in your honesty. It depends in how strong you're going to be just to express the voice of your heart. And people are so scared to be themselves. And you know why? Like I told you before. It's only because of those people that were rebuking you for years, and not only you, us as people for generations, breaking our spirits with rebukes and with insultings, breaking our self-image, our self-esteem. And now when you're thinking about being who that you are, you're remembering all of your failures and all of your weaknesses, and all of your downs, and all of your dark hours, and you're saying to yourself, okay, you know, I'm going to set myself free, who knows where I'm going to go? Who knows what I'm able to do? I can destroy the world with my lust, with my desires, with my, with my angers, with my temper, <coughs> with my fears. I can destroy the world if I'm going to set myself free. The only problem that you have is that you don't know who you are. And you fell to that trap of the evil inclination that is telling you that you're so corrupted and worthless and useless and weak and ugly and disgusting. And you're a failure. You fell in that trap. You bought his Lashonara, his evil words. You accepted them. You accepted that bad tongue, bad words on yourself. And you think that you're evil. And you don't know who you are. You don't recognize yet the light of your soul. That you're an angel. That you're a child of the Creator. That <coughs> inside of you, there is a holy, godly soul. Part of heaven. From above. That you are the one that the Creator was sitting and consulting with Him on how to create the world. The wisdom of how to create the world is installed inside of you. When you were still a baby, in your mother's stomach, you were learning all of the Torah. You know inside of your ancient memory, in your archives, in the deep, deep back of your head, you know all of the verses by heart, and there are 70 meanings or more. And all of the opinions, and all of the contradictions, and all of the doubts, and all of the answers, it's all inside of you. But why can't you find it? Why you don't know the answers to all of your questions? Because you have not asked them yet. Because you were not brave enough to walk into your inside, and to confront your fears, and to peel those husks, all of those coverings, and to reveal the light of your soul, your godliness, the beauty of your creation, who that you really are, who that you know that you are. When you're crying at nights, when you're disappointed, when you're crawling, calling Hashem, when you're begging for salvation, based on what? Based on what you're daring to call Hashem? If not because that you know that you're an only child. If not that you know that you are his child and he's your parent. If not that you know that you're partners in a way in this world. That it meant to be. That you're supposed to live your life together. The Creator and you. If not that you have that wisdom. You wouldn't open your mouth. You wouldn't dare to ask for no requests. 
We must dare. We must fight for the truth. We must fight for the weak. And we must fight for ourselves. We must be happy with the fact that we are faith seekers. That we are people that are looking for faith. Mevakshamana. That's who that we are. And even though that it means that we're decreeing on ourselves to go in darkness. Because like we said, the faith is in the night. And after every success of understanding and finding a piece of information, you find yourself falling to deeper places, to lower places, like King David. That he's screaming to Hashem, Mimamakim Kati Hashem. From the depths I'm calling you Hashem, not from one depth. I fell to one floor and then I was screaming to you and you were not answering me and I fell even lower and from that place I'm keep on calling you. I'm calling you from all of my fallings. I'm calling you from all of my failures. Only when you couldn't care less about yourself. Only when you care only about the truth. The real truth. What the Creator really wants from me. What is the purpose of my life? Who am I in this world? What is my mission? Only when you reach that point, the truth becomes to be so clear that it, you can feel it, that you can know it. Faith and knowledge becomes to be one. You don't need to believe in Hashem Yidbarach anymore. You know Him. You recognize Him. You're realizing things about the Creator. You find Him in your life. Like the Tichizkel, the Prophet said, I can see God. Suddenly you can see Him and recognize Him in your life. But for that, we need to be heroes. And that's our mission. So like I said before, this class is dedicated for those people that cannot find real satisfaction from life. To those people that no matter what they're achieving in this lifetime, they always feel empty-handed. That the biggest house doesn't do that for them. That the best, amazing, most great family in the world doesn't fill their essence. No matter how great your children can be, no matter how amazing your family is, still something is missing inside. And not because you don't love them enough. Because you've been carved from under the throne of honor. Because you have an endless soul. An endless soul cannot be satisfied unless the complete redemption will take place in our days, in our life. Only when the third temple will stand, built and made out of holy fire, in Jerusalem, and the gates will be open to all nations, that everyone will come and call Him in His name, and will believe in Him. And peace will be around and everyone will be relaxed and calm and secure. Only then we'll reach that real complete satisfaction from life. And before of that, there is nothing that can really ease our pain. Because we are those souls that have been sent to this world to complete and to finish the time that been decreed <coughs> on us from heaven that we're going to go and wander in the exile, in the darkness of exile. But the time is finished. It's about to be finished. And we just need to call the Creator with truth. You don't need to be righteous. You don't need to be a genius. You cannot be something that you are not. There is only one person that you can be, and it's who that you are. So just try to be that one that you are, and to be honest with it. <coughs> Just to let yourself be who that Hashem made you to be. Express your emotions. Don't be scared to be rejected. Don't be afraid to be fired. Don't be scared to be insulted. Listen to the rebukes. Listen to the message. Try to learn from every situation. Try to accept those humilities. They're coming to humble you, to build that vessel for you to contain the bounty, 
that you will be able to walk hand in hand with the Creator together. Like Adam Harishon and his wife Chavai Menu were walking together with the Creator in heaven. And Hashem is walking with us in our camps. And we need to recognize Him. We need to look for His footprints. We need to look for His fingerprints. We need to hear, to listen to His voice. To try to recognize His silence. To try to listen and recognize His loving voice. His supportive voice. His guidings. And they are everywhere. It only depends in our awareness. It only depends on how dedicated we're going to be to listen to the truth and to recognize the truth from the lies. When someone's going to offer you something, check what you really feel about it. Check what are your real thoughts. If you feel that something is wrong, don't do that. If you feel that it's great, go do that. If you failed, even though that you felt that it would be the greatest thing in the world, if you failed, ask yourself why. And don't be afraid to learn the lesson, to accept the rebuke. Hashem is going to show you why He failed you, why He blocked the light, why He threw you to the darkness, threw you to the darkness, why He turned off the light. There was a lesson over there. There was a mission. You were on a mission. There was a purpose for your failure, for your down. And you had to go through that difficult time. Only your thirst for the truth will bring you to find the real answer to all of your questions. A Baal Tshuva is a person that holds an answer in his hand. He knows the answer and there is only one answer for all of his questions, to all of the situations. There is only one answer to come closer to Hashem, no matter what. To be honest and truthful, no matter what you go through in life. From every failure, from every down, to climb up, to rise to grow, to bloom, not to give up, not to fall to that fake despair, to that depression. The only reason why you don't understand your true potential, why you're far from achieving wonders and miracles in your life, that all of your prayers will be ex accepted, that wonders will surround you, is only because you don't understand who you are. And you, when you're praying, you're praying with your sadness and with your lack of faith. You don't pray with trust and with confidence in Hashem. You're asking, please, maybe, you know, try, maybe can you, if you... You're coming with all of your doubts. Instead of understanding that you and the Creator are one, that you and the Torah are one, that you are a soul, that you're not a physical body, that you're a holy, divine soul that came down to this filthy world straight from heaven. And you have the potential to reveal godliness to the wide world. And if that's your real point, if the truth in your heart is to go and spread that faith that Hashem is incredible, that Hashem is so great, you're going to make it happen if you're not going to back off. If you want to reveal the greatness of the Creator to all of His children just for their success, that they will be happy, that they will not be sad anymore, that they will succeed, that they will grow, Hashem will give you the power to do that. Like I said, this class is dedicated to those people that cannot find satisfaction from the physicality, attempting physicality of life. That no matter what we're achieving and receiving and having, it doesn't fill us from inside. The answer to all of those people is that we need to work hard to find out who we really are 
and to remind ourselves of our high, high roots. From heaven we came to this world and after the third redemption, after the last redemption, we're going to go back to heaven. Life here on the world and this world will become like heaven and even higher than they were when Adam and Chava were walking in heaven in the ancient days, in those early days. The redemption will bring more light to the world than the light that was in heaven in the first days of creation. In that moment that the redemption will come, death will disappear from the world. There will be no more sicknesses, no more weaknesses, no more sorrow, no more pain. You're just going to be happy. From that moment and on, everything will be great. You're going to hear only good news. You won't have no more enemies, no more difficulties. You'll have bounty. You'll be rich. You'll be successful. You'll be happy. You'll be pleased. Your wife, she'll be happy. Even with the fact that she's married to you. Everything will be great. Your children will grow and everything will be wonderful. Your house won't have those leakings. You won't have problems with electricity anymore. The dead will rise from their graves. Their tombstones will go down and will be buried under the grass. It will be amazing gardens. No more graveyards. Everything will shine. Every tiny bug and fly will be important. We will understand his purpose. The animals are going to run together. The deers and the tigers and the lions. and Not like only like the verses are saying. Just literally understand. It will take place in your life. All the kittens and all the squirrels and all the dogs and all the birds. Everyone will, will run together. going to cooperate. will do things. They will bring those amazing flowers that you need for Shabbos for your wife and they're going to help you to schlep those bags that you need help from the supermarket. Animals will walk with you. We will live in heaven. Heaven will take place in this world. It won't be those neighborhoods anymore and the police and the people and criminals. and All of that is going to disappear. We'll have confidence and happiness and health and success in all aspects of our lives. All of our prayers will be answered. All your prayers will be answered. You want a bigger house, your house is going to grow. You want to have children, suddenly you're going to have a child. Your prayers will be answered. And not because of the wonders of Hashem, because that is the purpose of the creation. The Creator created a fantastic world in heaven, and we sinned. Something happened. If it was our fault, if it was a plan of Hashem already from before, I don't know. But the fact is that the world is spinning and spinning and spinning and those spinnings are coming to their end. And when the end is coming, so then it's a new beginning. And the redemption is taking place in our life. And then heaven is being revealed again. All the husks, all of the coverings are going to be peeled off from this world. And only the sweetness of the creation will be revealed to our eyes. And we're all going to live forever because we are an eternal souls. Because we are an endless beings. Our essence is to be spiritual and that's who we really are. So hold yourself strong to that while you're going through all of those horrible hours of the exile. <laughs> Nothing can redeem us until, not until the fat lady sings, mm -hmm. until the Creator will say that it's about time. And when the Creator will say that it's about time, then in one second the world will be great again. Everything will be perfect. Everyone will smile. Everyone will, will, will glow. And it depends on our honest requests from the Creator. Only in our prayers we can achieve and bring that mercy, redemption. Redemption that comes with mercy. Mercy is prayer. And prayer is supposed to come from the heart. 
And if you're not expressing your heart in your prayer, you're not praying. It's not your prayer. The Bodhidut, the prayer must be that you will speak to the Creator like you speak to your best friend with honesty. Just to feel comfortable enough to be who that you are. And that's the only thing that Hashem expects from us. That we will be truthful. That we will be who that He made us to be. Thank you very much, Hashem. Answer all of our prayers and requests. Amen. Thank you very much. Aboy Sai, I'm asking you please to help us, to support us on our website. We have our books, the children's books and our adult books. Please help us, support us. Our activities in the world are very important. Thank God we're able to save lives of people and people can save more and more. So every donation and every kind of support that you will make to our organization is great and more than blessed and welcome. And I'm blessing you that by the merit of your generosity, Hashem will answer all of your prayers and requests. Amen. Can you hear us? Rav Dror's newest book, It's Too Much For You, is now available. This amazing book is packed with unbelievable stories that were collected along Rav Dror's life journeys. It is a fantastic springboard that will help anyone who is close or far from faith to dive into the deepest waters. It's Too Much For You is modern, open, and authentic while demonstrating how God supervises all and brings people back out of nowhere from rock bottom. Get your copy today at imuna.com and see for yourself what the power of Amuna can do for you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.